Welcome to another software overview video from Frontier Precision. The Trimble Forensics Reveal software is a powerful and easy to use software for multiple types of diagramming and mapping. Below is a small list of some of the tools we want to demonstrate. When we first open the software, you're going to first see a wizard. This makes it so you can select a certain method that you want to get started and it'll help you along. For our example, we're just going to use a blank template and bring in a measurement log. Right away when you open the measurement log, you get the option to select your format that you want and if you're bringing it in from a specific total station. Our example, we have some data stored on the hard disk, so we're just going to bring that in, call it measurement 1, and define our starting point. When this data first comes in, you view all the points with a number beside it by default. In this example, I like to view the codes because I did measure codes in the field, which labeled it all of my points a little bit better. Once you make that change, you can see that we have all of our building corners or inside corners marked clearly on the screen. This will make it a lot easier for when we open up the polyline drawing tool and start connecting some of the dots for our room perimeter. As we go through this, notice that I selected just a generic line. These generic lines can also be more specified in a different type of line work, which we'll show you in a little bit. But you can select a fence or a sidewalk or different types of objects as we're doing this. Now that we're done with this drawing of the outside of the room, we can select one of the elements, this one being a wall, and we can change some of the properties of that. We can edit the texture, the thickness, any of that type of stuff in the polyline properties. In this example, we are going to convert this polyline to a smart room. A smart room gives us some flexibility of adding specific components. First thing I want to do is I want to come up to the actions once I open this up, and I'm going to add a smart room component. I'll select that from my list and I'll place it in the drawing. Notice I have placed a window and a door for this example. I'm also going to add a texture to the floor. Next thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to select one individual wall component and I'm going to edit that. When I open this up you'll see that I have the ability to work in a specific area on that wall and I can apply a picture or I can maybe apply some damage or something else specific on an individual wall. This one will just say that there was a uh, picture on the wall. I'll bring that photo in and it pastes it directly on the wall. The next thing we like to show you is with the evidence markers. So since I shot points with the total station I have positions exactly where we want these evidence markers. We can give them a name and also attach a photo to an individual point. I have a couple different evidence markers on here that I wanted to label. You can also bring in multiple photos per evidence marker. Once you're done placing those evidence markers, you can hover over them to view them and even create a report depending on how many evidence markers you have. Go into the actions and view the marker report. Now we're going to go into the tools menu and we can show you that you can even add a measurement on here or the measurement grid or a scale bar. These are all tools that will help identify the size of your scene and distance between objects. All of these are flexible enough that you can change the spacing and the size and then turn them on and off with the layers on the right side of the screen. You can do individual measurements between points and leave those visible when you want or also turn those off in the layers.
Once we're done with that, we have our scene set up. Now we're going to want to come in and start to bring some of the models in. So we come up to the models, and you'll notice we have a lot of built-in models right into the software. For example, we'll just bring something into the room here, place it, and adjust our orientation of it. And we can verify the size. Again, we'll, we're going to bring in one more specific object here. And since this one is not in our built-in library, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go out to the SketchUp plugin, where you'll have over 10 million objects to choose from. This specific plugin allows you to be very specific on the object that you're looking for. In this example, there was an Ethan Allen table we were looking for. All of the different options come up in our list. And we can view it in 3D to make sure that this is exactly what we wanted in our scene. We'll give it a name because this is going to be in our custom library after we import this. We also give it an orientation. The software needs to know which side is the top and the front, the side, those types of things. So it has correct orientation when we bring it in. We can also verify the size here. If anything needs to be changed, we'll change those in those boxes above. So now what we did is we brought that SketchUp model into our library. So we'll come over to model. We're going to open up our custom models that we brought in. And you'll see that we have our Ethan Allen table. And we'll drag that into the scene. Now the next thing we want to bring in is we want to bring in an avatar, which is again under models. We select the type and what type of avatar we want to bring into the scene. Drag and drop that in there. Now you'll notice once we place this in the scene, how much flexibility you have when placing this avatar. Once you click on it, you get the properties of every limb and joint, you get the flexibility of moving any of these components. These components can be in different configurations before and after using animations. Next thing we're going to do is I want to show you a simple line. This line can also be converted again to many of the smart objects that are in our list of options. Once we've created that line, we go to Actions, and we are going to convert that to something. Notice this is just a small list of some of the things that we can convert it to, one of them even being a bullet trajectory. And you can apply a cone of possibility and variance for that. But for this example, I just need to put a sidewalk out front. After we have our sidewalk placed, we just need to add one more model to this. And I'm just going to bring in a generic large SUV. Drop it in place and rotate it using the grips. Once this is placed, the next thing I want to show you is how to bring in a background map. This is a very nice feature because we can use either Google or Bing Maps and specify a specific area or address to bring in a map from. If you notice, there's a check mark box for if you want to see the labels from the street or the park or whatever the scene may be, if you want that to come into your scene. Once that's in your scene, you're going to rotate your scene to fit the map. Sometimes that's used by some of the line work or models you already have created. Once you have all of this fitted to the proper location, you can orientate and view your model in 3D and show any of the animations you may have created throughout this time.
That concludes our software overview video. Please contact us for a personalized demo for your application. Thank you.